Welcome to part one of the online presentation on the Garden Fun Club program, presented at Toronto City Saturday on March 1st, 2022. The Garden Fun Club was published as a free online resource to engage children through hands-on gardening projects. Part one looks at the personal and pedagogical foundation of the program, while part two provides an overview of how to use the book to teach gardening to children. You can download a free copy at www.sciasonstudio.com. Thank you. And your your work on on educating children about and engaging children in gardening um, and sharing your your wisdom on how to do that tonight. Uh, and I will hand it over to you. You can explain it better than I can. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you. So thank you so very much. Uh, it is an absolute pleasure to be here today. And um, I just wanted to say welcome, everyone. Thank you for spending uh, tonight, this afternoon, this evening with me. I'm sure you've got much better things to do, but I, I hope I make it interesting for you. So uh, first of all, I'm going to begin by saying a big thank you to the organizers of CD Saturday for organizing this wonderful event. I've been a part of a couple of live ones, and uh, the past two ones have been virtual. And I know it takes so much work, but uh, if it wasn't for the generosity and the kindness of so many organizations, um, our communities would not be as rich as they are. So uh, thank you all for organizing this. Today's program, I'm going to be talking about where my Garden Fun Club actually started, uh, a little bit about teaching and learning methodologies and the way that I um, test and try to improve it all the time. And then I'll uh, walk through the program and share examples. And I come from a family who loves gardening. And um, this passion started with my grandfather, who absolutely loved to grow anything and everything. And um, it's something that my mother continued. And so she even took it a step further and she started an orange tree farm and we had we had literally tons and tons of oranges but uh, my mom expanded it into uh, greenhouses and uh, those trees not so small anymore the little trees have grown up and they are magnificent and glorious so i come from from surrounded by people who are passionate about gardening. And that's how I grew up, is with the love of gardening. And um, one thing that people always assume is that my work is actually involved somehow related to gardening, and it's not. I actually um, am an industrial designer. I used to work in manufacturing environments uh, for in aerospace, automotive, and most recently for motion capture cameras for um, movies. But um, the hobby has always, everything else around my, in my life has been around, involved with gardening. Um, a couple of years ago, I became a consultant. So I started working from home and I missed the thing we call people. You wouldn't see people for days. So um, when there was an opportunity for me to teach a course uh, I jumped for it and hence started my side hustle of teaching at Sheridan College, where I got to meet the most remarkable and amazing students. I am in love with teaching. I absolutely enjoy it. And um, it's uh, in every year I try to tweak things up and improve the way that I taught uh, the courses that I taught. Around the same time, I have to say, um, we moved into this house. I did want a very clean environment to raise my family. I had a young daughter and I didn't want her being among pesticide and chemicals. So uh, I decided to go pesticide free. Absolutely no chemicals, nothing. I wanted a clean environment. And the more I got educated about um, uh, the benefits of um, native plants actually reducing my carbon footprint. So, and 
2015, I applied for a master's in environmental studies. I think this cartoon is one of my favorites. It absolutely summarizes um, some of the worries that I had. And um, there were three things uh, in York that really influenced me in developing this program. Well, the first one was I became the graduate assistant in charge of taking care of the native plant garden there. Uh, it is planted with um, all native plants. I had never seen a garden like that before. And it was absolutely thriving. And the species and the wildlife and everything. I started to think differently about gardening because I saw gardening now as one piece in the larger picture of social justice and environmental protection and acknowledging the histories that had happened on the land before I was there. So um, gardening itself was not a neutral activity for me. And then I was lucky enough to uh, have two courses of popular education, which exposed me to critical theory based on the work of Paulo Freire. So this, this aligned very well with my own experience in teaching, because I understood that only students who developed a really personal connection with the topic would excel. It wasn't about um, just learning the material or for me magically transferring the material information to them. It was about um, uh, developing a curriculum, testing it out, reflecting on the outcomes and, and continuing to enhance and evolve it and understand how it really affected the learners. As part of the praxis, that was the final testing of the curriculum, uh, I decided to reflect back on my love of native plants uh, and growing from seeds. So I created a series of workshops and these are the questionnaires that I compiled. And um, I'll get to that. But the third thing, maybe the last piece of the puzzle for me was, um, I was also studying for a graduate diploma in environmental studies. And um, so there was one course in environmental education, which was uh, where we explored alternate ways of establishing meaningful relationships with the environment. So we're talking about direct learning environments. Because I took the time to look at the same spot from different viewpoints, I started to care about it. And maybe that was the most revealing part is if we establish those connections with nature, we start caring. So the biggest takeaway that I had from that course was this um, quote, where human beings are unlikely to protect what they do not love and they cannot love what they do not know. So to me, this was the starting point of understanding that the first step of getting people, children, to care about the environment, to protect it, to fight for it, is to get them to show them what it is, is to connect them with it. Now, at this point, I want you to think back and think of your own experience as a learner. So chances are you liked the topic because you understood it. And I know this from experience. And so where this becomes really interesting is through the work of Paulo Freire, the great Brazilian educator. He refers to traditional learning methods of teaching methods as banking model, where you have a fountain of information as a teacher who transfers these, this information to the uh, the empty vessels of students. So the goal in critical theory is about creating opportunities to create meaningful and relevant knowledge. And by this time, you're going to say, oh, but Sae, uh, I've never taught a day in my life. And I'm going to say that makes you the perfect person because um, you don't have any preconceptions. 
but you can be a collaborator with whoever you sit down and uh, work with. So you can together, you're not under the burden of thinking, I have to transfer knowledge. No, you can take the joy of learning alongside the learner and understanding that it's about collaboration. It's about creating meaningful opportunities and even discussing findings. Now, I love this method of teaching because every single time I have a workshop or something and I have through those conversations, I actually learn something myself. So I had three workshops within the Faculty of Environmental Studies. So this was Change Your World and um, I had three sessions there too. By January 2017, when uh, my daughter's middle school approved the formation of the Garden Fun Club lunchtime program, uh, which spanned about 14 weeks and um, culminated in the planting of a native plant garden, uh, this, was, uh, this was another case where I had a curriculum and I tried to get an understanding of what was working and what wasn't. This was actually the foundation for this book. And the kids had an absolute blast because it was so much fun. It was great activities. And I'm going to go into it at um, the second part of the presentation and go through all the different activities so you can get a sense of what was involved. In 2019, there was an artist uh, from Austin, Texas, called Dernith Doherty, who was about to launch an exhibit at the Ontario Science Center, and it was about seeds. And so she was looking for somebody who would be interested in holding seed starting workshop. This was uh, so much fun because the if you've ever been to the Science Center, it is crazy. It's like you have these hordes of school kids that run through and they are just so excited and they can't stand still and you still wanna teach them something. And they come in these ginormous classes and it's like, and it's a whole different world. So I taught them how to collect, dry and sprout tomato and pepper seedlings. Once the exhibit closed at the Science Center and moved on to the Museum of Contemporary Art, I had to revisit the way that I was conducting the workshop. This one was a different one because I decided to take an approach of using games for the children because first of all, my voice wasn't carrying through that noise and the children needed something to focus on. And it was great. Um, if we had adult sessions, it was a different story. But when there were children involved, I would ask them questions and they knew so much. And I think that was probably extremely um, surprising for their parents of how aware these children were of climate change, of uh, native plants, of monarchs, of milkweed. And some of them were kindergarten, some of them were grade school, but they were so aware. And so I, I thought, man, these children are just so amazing if only we could tap into that passion and um, turn it into something else. So when the pandemic brought the exhibit to a close, I knew that there was a need out there. So I thought I casually began working on the idea of a book whenever.